I'm Adam Moss, and this is Moss Models. Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about nose and tail wheel steering. I've gotten a few questions recently in this area, and really about how do you set it up, how do you set up independent uh, trim, and also how do you get rid of your rudder trim affecting your tail wheel or nose wheel. Uh, today, we're going to go over tail wheel. I know that's a little bit less common to have independent tail wheel steering than nose wheel steering but we're going to be using the same model that we set up for the gear door seat or the gear sequencing uh, video that i've previously released and that one is assuming a p51 style set of gear so we're going to continue down that path and we're going to do a tail wheel uh, with independent steering and independent tail wheel trim and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do the tailwheel trim. One suitable for any of the radios with six trimmers. Um, I'm going to show you one where you, for those of us who don't use the rudder trim a lot, and I'm personally one of them, I get my rudder directly in line and I've almost never found the need to trim out rudder when I'm not flying an RE uh, or three, two or three channel aircraft. Uh, often called RE, RES, RET for rudder elevator, rudder elevator spoiler, or rudder elevator throttle. There's even REF, rudder elevator flaps. Those are all common sailplane types, although some folks, including myself, do fly power. Uh, I have a S, an Airtronics ST. Uh, I love that little thing. That was my first aircraft I ever scratch built. Uh, I've got a SIG Clipper under construction right now, which is another three channel setup. A rudder elevator throttle. Throttle. They're both rudder elevator throttle. The DST is originally set up for a 049 in the nose, uh, so it would normally be a two channel. Alright, moving on. So we're going to show a, um, first off, the general way I normally do it. This is going to be using either T5 or T6. I usually use T6 for uh, the steering trim because T5 is the one I use for gain or for mixer adjusting, it's my do everything uh, trimmer. Um, so I'll show this on T6. Then we'll walk through and show you how to do it on an X20 where you don't have a T5 or T6. I'll give you a hint, those function switches that you've been ignoring can be repurposed as uh, trimmer inputs. And then we'll go through and I'll show you how I would do it in the case of setting up a normal trimmed method uh, where the um, where you're using the rudder trimmer for your steering trim and you're just zeroing out the rudder uh, because you're typically going to spend most of your time trimming out your ailerons and elevator. So let's get to it. We have a very simple, actually a very complex model, let's be honest here. Um, I'm going to just get rid of that flap. Flaps to elevator mixer. I don't know. That was just from a, from a, some testing I was doing. So what we have here is we have a P-51 style aircraft. It actually has no flaps. Um, deal with that in another video. But we've got, we're set up for main gear retracts, fully sequenced. Uh, but we don't have tailwheel yet. Now, there are a couple of items here that we are going to need to add. The first one is straight up, we need to add a mixer, and it's gonna be a free mixer. Last position, and let us call this, uh, this is steering. It's not gonna be always on. So we're gonna go pull the switch here, we're going to flick it up. That's our gear down position. So this is only ever going to be active when the gear is down. We don't want the, the, the nose gear or the tail uh, wheel moving while retracted. So we've pulled the gear to the down position. Or sorry, I just screwed that up. We want it active when the tail wheel is down. Forward is up, gear up. Away is down. Uh, the reason for that, very simply, is away is default for me push all the switch out, switches up or away, and I get a perfectly flyable aircraft that can sit right there. That includes gear being down. 
Um, so that's just a personal safety thing I do. You don't have to do it that way. I do it that way. So we want this active when it's down. Now we're going to go and set, set the source, and it's going to be analogs, and it defaults to rudder. So that's really easy. Analogs is your sticks. So these are your analogs. Unconditioned. No trim. No mixing. Raw stick. That's what an analog is. Uh, I will note the one time analogs get mucked with is the trainers. Trainer system can replace your four basic analogs with input from the student radio. That's the only time anything ever happens to the analogs, only time there's any processing. We don't need a curve, we don't need an offset, weight up, go as soon as 100%. Uh, I always like to set it at 100%, set my end stops via the output uh, menu. And then you can set up low rates, but 100% is should always be the physical end stops. And then if you want less, you dial in less at the mixer. And output, we are going to go here. And we, I'm going to put this on channel 10. And the reason I'm going to put it on channel 10 is we still do need a tailwheel retract. Uh, that's something that we can quickly do. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to actually add another another channel to the to the main gear, and this one is going to be on channel nine. No, just for clarity, let's go over to channel nine. It's unnamed. Let's go back to mixer. So now we've got main gear uh, on six, seven, and nine. Uh, probably should just rename that mixer to be something like retracts. Uh, when I did it, it was main gear. Uh, we've got steering on ten, and the next thing we're going to go do, and this is the way I normally do it, uh, and I'm just going to actually sorry, I just realized that's the way I I've always done this adding a mixer, but there's an easier way to do it, and i got to remember this, because there is an offset option in a free mix, you can long press, use a source, and then go over, trims, and we're going to set this to T6. So let's just zoom out a little, so you can see my T6, T6 right there. Okay, so now we have, this is the easy, easy mode version, outputs, we'll go over here, and just pay attention right up here, that's your channel 10 steering, and y you can see I'm just clicking this, and that is your trim, and then you can see me move. That's my steering. And when the gear retracts, nothing. Absolutely nothing. It goes back to zero. So the moment you flick the re retract, it disables, goes back to centered, and comes up. And there you go. And you've got trim. So, that's nose wheel steering or tail wheel steering with trim, easy mode. Next up we're going to do, we're going to address what do you do if you've got an X20 or an X20S and you don't have a, four, a fifth or sixth trimmer. So what we're going to do there, and you know the first thing I do is I go back, we'll go back and we will clear the offset.
and two. There's an easy way, easier way to do this. Convert to value, and there it's back to zero. So we've now removed that mix, the mixer. So we're going to add a trim mixer, last position, and we're going to call it tail. Uh, tail wheel trim. Active condition is going to be again SF up. Now, we actually have to go quickly do one thing in edit model. Let's go down and see the function switches. I'm going to set them to momentary. That makes every single one of these function switches an independent, and that's these switch six switches down here. They're always down here. There's either four or six of them depending on the, on the radio for all tandem and twin radios. The, uh, the horses don't have these. They've got a, a, uh, a third potentiometer there that functions as a six position but no extra one. But you've got a T5 or T6 if you have a Horus, so it's an, really a non-issue from this perspective. So we're going to set those to momentary. And now let's go back to the mixer. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up, and that's top button. Down is going to be this button right here. So our trim up is now the, t the upper one, and trim down is the bottom one. The middle one does nothing as it stands. Channel count out. Output is channel 10 steering. And there now we have a trim mixer. Now the steering, we'll go back and look at the output again. So we're up, we're up. And now you can see, as I tr trim, you can see, you can just see it come in. I will warn you, when you're using the trim mixer, you don't get that acceleration like you do with a regular trimmer. This is something we fixed for 1.5. There's a new method of doing trim mixers. It's way better uh, because what it actually does is creates a new trim function. So you can have a T7, a T8 with arbitrary inputs, and you get full functionality of a, tr of a trimmer. Uh, flight mode based trims, uh, actually more powerful than that, um, due to some other changes. It's going to be awesome. But these things just have a steady repeat rate like a regular mix. You can see it coming in right there. And I'm just zeroing it out using the other one. I'm down mixer. You can see right there, actually that one, if I cl just click on the edge, you can see me hit, you can see them flash as I hit the button. And then if I put the gear up, you notice how it's zeroed out immediately. That's because it's triggered from there. And that's really it. It's, you've got the trim, you have the, uh, you have the steering. And you've reused these, a couple of these FSWs. You've got enough to make three trimmers there. Uh, and now that you've got them, you can set them to momentary. Now the last question is, and we're going to just zoom back in on the radio itself for this one. How do you do it if you want tailwheel trim and you don't actually need trim on your rudder? So the first thing we'll do is we're going to go back out and over to the mixer and we're just going to delete this so we just got rid of the trim function now what we're going to do is pretty simple uh, we are going to edit S steering becomes and we're going to put put our free mix No. No. We're going to rename this one Rudder. So what we're doing is we're putting our free mix on the rudder channel. So this is the one, it's got no trim at the moment, and it's outputting the channel for rudder. And then we're going to go over to channel for rudder, 
This is the one with the trimmer, and we're going to rename it to And we're going to just put it over to channel 10 steering. Nope. We did the reason I said no to swapping the settings is because I want, I still want the rudder channel set up as rudder. The uh, and the steering channel set up as steering. So any endpoints I set up. So we'll just zoom right back out. So you can see the rudder trim, which is right there. And what we've got here is, again, you can see the rudder. <coughs> but if I hit the trim, nothing happens. Let's get a little volume so you can hear my trim. You can see absolutely nothing's happening over there. But if we go over here, uh, you can see, again, we've still got the steering. And you can see the trim's working. But we made a mistake. Now let's go back and fix our mistake. Because we just swapped the outputs. And that has a big problem. And that, and actually, I'll go over here and show it to you. Let's go back here on channel one. Put the gear down. We got no rudder. Because I didn't swap the active conditions. So let's go over. Steering. Edit. Active condition is flip it down. So we've, but we still, and we need to go do the opposite. We gotta go here, and we pick always on. Now what we've done is with the gear up, rudder still works, but steering doesn't. It's right up there. Gear down, steering works, and we've got trim on steering. So there you have it. Three different ways to d implement tailwheel trim. First one is great if you've got T5 or T6 on your radio. Uh, the second one, and actually the first one with a little bit of addition is how you're going to do it always in 1.5. The second one is how you do it if you still want to keep your rudder trim, but you've got an X20 or an X20S which does not have a T5 or T6. You've only got the four trimmers. So we reuse the function switches mapped to momentary uh, function as our trim input for the tail wheel. In this case, it could also be your nose wheel. Um, and the third one is, what if you don't care about your rudder trim? You got your rudder dead on, you know it's centered, you know it's good, uh, but you still want to have that, tr that trim. And there we just swap the two mixes so that our free mix is now our rudder mix. Uh, I've done this a lot actually on the X when I was still flying the X20 as my primary. Uh, the reason for that was I needed a trimmer particularly for my gain. I don't like putting gain on a pot because it doesn't remember from, from flight to flight what my gain setting is. So what I would do is I'd always just delete the rudder mixer, throw in a free mix as my rudder, and then I'd reuse that rudder trim for whatever I needed and still keep the trims I needed. But I, I actually did that early on. I did that a lot with throttle trim as well. I don't now. Uh, early on in my, ex, my tandem journey, I was flying mostly electrics. Electrics very rarely have a need for a throttle trim. So I just built a custom set of throttle mixers to get a safe cut plus um, a, thr a usable throttle mixer out of free mixes. Uh, now that I'm flying a lot of glow, and most of my aircraft today are glow, I use the can throttle mixer um, for a very simple reason. Low position trim is just critical for being able to adjust idle properly on a glow air aircraft. Actually, on gassers and turbines, it's very critical as well. But that's just a little bit of that. Um, so, yes. Uh, Three different uh, use cases for three different differing setups when 